Hi everybody, it's Lawrence Mass here, registered osteopath and homeopath here in Barbados. Now, in today's lesson, I'm going to teach you guys all about the second law of perfect health, which is all about protein choices and amounts and how you can improve your protein choice according to your blood type, which is a type of engine, and then you will get better performance from that engine. I first came across the work of Dr. Peter Adamo, who is a naturopathic physician, Eat Right for Your Blood Type, in 1999, and a patient had made a passing comment, have you heard about the blood type diet system? And my first thought was that it was just another fad, but the idea was interesting, so I decided to investigate it. I found out that this was also very similar to the caveman diet or paleolithic diet. And I have fused the two of these theories based on clinical observation in my practice, a kind of in-the-trenches insight of what really works to heal the body. I have stepped outside the confines of orthodox medicine and looked for a theory that worked best to describe which proteins are really best for us individually. The basic premise is that the four blood groups developed at different times in human history, and historically each blood group ate a different diet according to the environmental and nutritional pressures in their evolutionary ancestry. And therefore, different blood groups today have different metabolic needs. So having access to a microscope and a small clinical laboratory on site, as well as a willing patient base, I was able to put the theory to the test in order to find out conclusively if there was anything to this paleolithic diet. So using a group of willing patients to act as guinea pigs, I devised a test to see if a patient's blood improved when he or she went on the blood type diet. And I went on the blood type diet myself and noticed marked improvements in my sense of well-being and also my blood chemistry scores improved dramatically. Now these results were correlated with a quantitative fluid analyzer, uh, standard blood chemistry scores and physiological data and clinical microscopy. And in summary, there are certain properties that favor certain blood types metabolically. Although the theory is incomplete by itself with the other four laws to make perfect health, it makes a lot of common sense. Just a little history on blood types. The O blood, which is 46% of the US population, stems from the original hunter-gatherer or caveman bloodstock. And this blood type developed in a strong and tough environment and originates from Africa. Animal flesh was the predominant food source of protein, hunter-gatherer, you know, and as evolution clocked on, these blood types adapted to the amount of protein and produced a lot of stomach acid. O-bloods historically have a high incidence of stomach ulcers because of the high acid and gastritis, and they should avoid farm-based protein foods such as wheat and dairy. They also have very strong immune systems and have constitutions that are, have very efficient metabolisms. They can create a lot of energy. Their risks are clotting disorders and have tendencies to have slow thyroids, hence the need for kelp as a source of iodine for the thyroid. They can suffer from ulcers if they're too acidic. They thrive off intense physical exercise like strength training, short sharp. Now, the A-bloods, 42% of the U.S. population is the next in line in the evolutionary tree, and they have adapted to eating grains and beans, farm foods, especially soy and soy products. Soy is very beneficial for this blood group, you know, the Asian kind of gene. This DNA shift from O to A coincided with the agricultural revolution, i.e. the controlled systematic planting of seeds for harvesting very different from the hunter-gatherer. Now the A-bloods are the vegetarians who eat fish and chicken occasionally and this blood group produces less stomach acid because they didn't eat such complex proteins as meat. So exercise should be calming, stretching exercises such as walking long distances, yoga, pilates. The B-blood which is found in about 5% of the US population, is a, has a strong immune system and is very versatile and adaptable. And bees developed in, in a difficult, colder climate. They have a wide variety of food choices and they can really tolerate dairy in large amounts and have no real natural weaknesses, except a tendency towards autoimmune diseases such as lupus and rheumatoid. This blood group, being landlocked in evolutionary terms, is allergic to shrimp and to other shellfish. There were no seas. There were landlocked. Anyway, so they also should have uh, should avoid chicken as this also produces a negative lectin protein response and they enjoy moderate exercise such as swimming and surfing. 
Now, the youngest of the blood group system, the AB blood groups, makes up anything between 1 and 3% of the US population. This blood group evolved between the mixing of B types across the Great Silk Road. Uh, in ancient times, the Great Silk Road was a trading highway. This was one of the major trading routes between the East and the West in early human history. They are suited to contemporary lifestyles and have very strong immune systems. They carry all the benefits of both A's and B's combined, but they should still avoid shellfish and chicken. Now we have an idea of the blood types and their histories. Uh, let's turn our attention to the correct amount of protein. Protein is often an overlooked feature in people's diets, but it can cause an over-acidification of the body in certain cases. The sizes of the meals given in restaurants these days are excessive. This is called daylight gluttony and is a side effect of the restaurant's policy of getting people to spend more by feeding them more. The human body was not designed to deal with a 12 ounce steak and most of the protein will start to putrefy in the guts if the stomach acid cannot digest it. So protein portions are related to the height of the body and the metabolic demand of the patient. The average adult female and male needs approximately three to four ounces of protein per serving which is really about the size of their palm area of the individual's hand. So giving a six ounce steak to a child of eight years of that age that, you know, that has a palm about one and a half ounces is just totally unrealistic. So remember the rule of the hand for portion control. Let me just remind you, basically this is the protein portion and of course the smallest portion on the plate is going to be the carbs, yeah, because it's the first law and then you have, you know, four selections of vegetables coming through, you know, or you can do three vegetables and a salad. Okay, so this is really, really important. Firstly, the protein needs to be adequately digested because if it's too much protein, bigger than the palm of your hand, you can overload the digestive system, which only causes more rotting within the digestive system itself, putrefaction. Anyway, secondly, the amount of protein needs to be controlled as too much protein can actually clog up the pipes and contribute to cardiovascular issues. So most books on, the, on nutrition will suggest three to five ounces of protein per day for an average adult. Mm. Anyway, so for further information on all of this, a great lifestyle, you know, the five laws to perfect health, go to Amazon.com and purchase my book, The Hidden Cure, The Five Laws of Perfect Health. And it's also now in Kindle. Super. Once again, reach out and grab the health you need to feel in order to believe. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.